네, 이번 시간에는 SC그룹 부가시역 최고 투자 책임자인 레이먼드 청을 스튜디오로 직접 모시고 단독 인터뷰를 진행을 해보도록 하겠습니다. 최근 글로벌 증시의 변동성이 커지고 있는 만큼 전반적인 증시에 대한 상황들 함께 짚어보도록 하겠습니다. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let's just get straight into our discussion first. Um, as the Fed cut rates by 50 basis point in the previous meeting, uh, do you think we could see another substantial cut in the upcoming November meeting as well? I don't think even the Fed Chair Powell can tell you right away whether he would cut 25 <laughs> or yeah. 50 bips uh, in November. But I, I think he is going to be very data dependent and yeah. open minded. Mm -hmm. um, given now his focus is pretty much on the US job market. Yeah. So uh, what is worth monitoring uh, between now and the next meeting mm -hmm. in November would be how the job market data okay. turns out. Mm -hmm. And um, our, our view is that there would likely be continued softening, yeah. but well, still not pointing all. to the situation of a US recession happening. Yeah. Um, so uh, our standard charter SC, um, uh, CIO house view is that uh, we continue to expect 50 basis oh. points of rate cut before end of this year. Okay. And then next year, it will be about 25 basis points cut every quarter. Okay, so within this year, there's another possibility to get another 50 basis point down, right? Then with rate cut officially underway, which sectors should we focus more? Yeah, uh, uh, we have an overweight um, uh, call on U.S. equities within global equities. Yeah. Okay, but uh, we recommend diversifying uh, mm, across okay. sectors. Now, um, the key sectors we are still constructive on are the growth areas, mm. um, including technology yeah. and communication services. These are the sectors that we believe would benefit from um, AI structural growth trend. Mm -hmm. And in addition, um, multiple uh, PE multiples will continue to expand yeah. as rate cuts continue to happen. Um, and apart from that, we recommend balancing some growth features with resilient earnings growth sectors, mm -hmm. such as healthcare. Okay. We think that um, it's good to add to healthcare or even financials um, on pullback. Okay, so it's important to diversify sectors at this stage and focus on the growth sector. Then China also has announced a massive um, stimulus package. How do you assess this move and what impact do you think the market will absorb? Yeah, um, uh, China does really surprise us um, this week yeah. so far uh, with a, a lot of uh, um, stimulus measures mm -hmm. across um, banking, housing, yeah. uh, consumption, um, and uh, so forth. So um, I think in the near term, sentiment towards risk assets in China will improve. Okay, uh, we expect around five to ten percent incremental upside uh, to both Hong Kong uh, Hang Seng Index and also uh, onshore CSI 300 index in mainland China. Um, but we do think that um, uh, whether th this kind of rally would be sustained depends highly on whether um, uh, we would see more bond issuances mm -hmm. by the Chinese government because yeah. um, uh, the provincial and local governments are pretty tight in mm -hmm. cash at this point because they cannot generate land sales mm -hmm. uh, given the uh, property market situation. So um, we, we think that they need to issue a lot more bonds in order to fund uh, the uh, budget deficit. Okay, then is there any other specific sectors that we can raise our expectation? Well, um, two areas in, in China equities mm -hmm. that we favor at yeah. this moment. Uh, number one, uh, we like the non-bank, high dividend, okay. state-owned enterprise uh, shares listed yeah. in Hong Kong. The reason being, um, each shares um, in the state-owned enterprises right now are giving um, investors about 7% dividend yield. And that's on top of the mm. share price uh, upside potential now that we are experiencing. Yeah. Um, the reason why I exclude banks um, in this uh, uh, buy idea is that uh, we are concerned that the Chinese banks will likely have to uh, do national service. And this seems to be the case now as uh, one of the policy stimulus measures includes yeah. lowering the outstanding uh, mortgage funding rate. Um, so that would mean that the interest rate margin for the Chinese state-owned banks will likely shrink. Mm 
in the foreseeable future. Oh. Now, the other area we also like would be mm -hmm. high quality uh, chi Chinese growth stocks okay. in uh, the communication yeah. and uh, consumer discretionary sectors. Mm -hmm. The reason being uh, stimulus measures are ultimately targeted to boost discretionary consumption mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. And so we think that um, um, uh, we are just starting to see policy stimulus and there will likely more to come to boost consumption in China. Cool. And I think the one of the biggest issues going on in our stock market is also about the risk regarding to AI and semiconductor. Um, do you really think the semiconductor are truly facing a winter season and as we already checked the earnings for Micron, they already show us that it's going to be strong in the next year as well. What are your personal opinions? Yeah, um, I disagree that um, okay. AI winter is coming. As a matter of fact, um, um, if we play baseball, you know that we yeah. think that uh, uh, AI is still in the early innings mm. um, of this up cycle. Okay. Um, but what is uh, different this time around mm -hmm. is that um, we are much earlier than, than previous cycles to see the monetization of okay. these um, uh, new investment mm. in AI. Like, as opposed to in the past, internet bubble um, uh, happened because mm. um, uh, a lot of the internet companies were loss making. Yeah. They are not able to turn around mm. until years after. So um, as uh, you said about Micron, uh, mm -hmm. we also have heard from NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang yeah. that um, AI investments are worth making because the customers are outstripping supply. The demand is so strong. Yeah. And um, so once NVIDIA can um, add enough capacity to really uh, produce more advanced AI chips, we think that more of these platform customers uh, will order more. And mm. so we think that the momentum will continue. Yeah. So it's all about the expectation gap. Yeah. OK, so um, AI sector are still in the early stage and the demand is still remaining strong. Then at this time, if NVIDIA start produce their next AI chip, Blackwell, what would the sector um, react to that? Hmm. Well, I think uh, two things to think about, right? Okay. Or one would be um, the fact that uh, uh, product innovation uh, always brings about incremental demand growth, mm. right? So uh, it's definitely good news if Blackwell con uh, continues to be successful as a new product. Mm -hmm. Second, um, I think it's very important for uh, a product innovator, uh, including NVIDIA, to be able to uh, generate enough productive capacity yeah. to feed the orders. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, um, the capacity would be on stream um, in the next 12 months to really sustain this AI demand momentum. Okay. Then with the Micron earnings, we are heading into the next earnings seasons. Which sectors do you think investors should be optimistic about? Mm. Well, I think we need to be selective here. Um, uh, for some of the leaders that uh, we highlighted in the AI sector, um, they will likely continue to um, outstrip um, some of the uh, forecasts on the street in terms of their earnings expectations, right? Uh, if that's the case, uh, we, we think that it's still a good time to really buy on any pullback going into the earnings season. Yeah. Um, and the other area um, to, to think about is financials. Financial. Um, US financials have uh, come down quite a bit because one of the major banks uh, recently guided down uh, the net interest margin yeah. um, expectation. Okay. But we think that it's uh, bank specific. And um, uh, from the previous track record, um, we always see that uh, uh, US major banks would come back quite strongly. Mm. Um, and given that we are expecting a soft landing in the US, right, yeah. we think that loan growth will remain quite solid there. Mm, okay, as we are expecting soft landing in the near future, financial sector would be very optimistic. Then Korean investors are also showing a significant interest in EV and battery market. Do you have any of your personal views for those industries? Yeah, this is uh, one of the most exciting uh, growth areas in Asia, yeah. right? And it's not just uh, Korea, uh, Hong Kong, China are equally excited about that. 
but um, there's just some offsetting concerns um, about this industry uh, that I need to highlight, right? Like, let, let's start off with the positive. Um, the, the EV sector is definitely seeing increasing yeah. global market penetration. Mm. One every four cars sold in the world these days are electric vehicles, okay? okay? Uh, and in China alone, one of every three cars mm -hmm. are EVs EV. already. Yeah. Uh, so that's a lot of momentum going in terms of penetration. Okay. But it's dependent on uh, how good the, the products are, how well priced the products are. In other words, in order to expand into the mass market, you need to keep lowering the price for better technologies. But what we are facing yeah. is geopolitical tensions and um, more sanctions coming from advanced um, uh, economies trying to limit the growth of uh, emerging economies like China and Korea. Yeah. And so that, that is a, an offsetting negative okay. that we need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. So EV names or battery names uh, could be under uh, some volatility in the near term approaching the US elections. Mm -hmm. But longer term, we are structurally very positive on okay. this group. So in longer term, still very positive with EV and battery industry as well. Then for our last question, um, recently the gold, its price is keep um, getting its record high recently. Any other views with the gold? Well, we are very positive on gold. Um, SC latest house view is uh, um, uh, thinking that we need to be overweight on gold um, as a major asset class. And our 12-month price forecast on gold has uh, gone up to 2,800 uh, US dollars per ounce. So we think that um, uh, in the um, uh, near future, uh, geopolitical risks are uh, heightening, right? Um, as uh, the US-China tensions could continue to mount, I think it's important to uh, add more exposure to gold as a hedge against any downside risk from geopolitics mm -hmm. and even economic recession. Okay, thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you. Thank you.